Hallo, ich bin Johannes von Your German Teacher. And I guess that you are here because you want to know more about the Goethe Zertifikat A2 exam. In this video, you will learn everything you need to know about the speaking part, sprechen. Let's start with the structure, der Aufbau. There are three parts. Teil 1. Fragen zur Person. You have a partner in this test and you have to ask this partner some questions. The other way around, your partner will also ask you some questions that you need to respond. You need to answer those questions. Teil 2. Von sich erzählen. Here you need to say something about yourself. It's a monologue. How it exactly works, you will learn later in detail. Teil 3. Etwas zusammen planen. In the third and last part, you plan something together with your partner. So that's a dialogue. Goethe says this whole speaking part takes about 15 minutes. I think it's really hard to say. It all depends on how fast people speak, how long your partner and you think before you answer and so on. So just hard to say. Before I start to explain all three parts in detail, let me remind you that this video has a bonus tip, like all our videos, which might help you to get through this whole test a bit more easy. And now let's start. So this test has two examiners and there are also two exam participants. So this means you are not alone. Um, before you actually start with the first part, the examiners will introduce themselves and they expect you to do exactly the same. It's nothing difficult. You just need to say your name, where you come from, where you live, or maybe how old you are. That's it. It could sound something like this. Hallo, ich heiße Johannes Müller. Ich komme aus Frankreich. Ich wohne seit zwei Monaten in Deutschland. That's basically already enough. And now, here is the first part. Sprechen Teil 1. Ask and answer for questions. Fragen zur Person. So, you have a partner here. And you need to ask your partner for questions. And he needs or she needs to answer those four questions. And then this changes. Your partner also asks you four questions. But it's not just any questions. They have something in mind here. That's why they give you four cards. And those cards, they look like this here. But before you start to ask and answer questions, the examiners will show you how this should look like. So they will ask and answer each other a question. And then once you received your cards, which are actually different, you have not the same cards like your partner, you will have to start right away. They will just tell you or your partner to start. And that's it. There's no real preparation time. You will definitely don't have enough time to write something down. Of course, they will give you enough time to have a look at those cards and decide which one you start with. But that's it. Not long. Let's say those cards here, those four are your cards. Wohnort, Studium, Familie, Sport. I would choose Wohnort as my first card card. And as this test that we take is taking place in Munich, München, I would ask my partner this question here. Wohnen Sie hier in München? I address him or her in a formal way. Sie. And that's because even if you think the other person is much younger than you, so let's use du. Still, you see, just to be sure that you don't offend someone or treat someone disrespectful. So your partner will answer. Ja, ich wohne in München, in Sendling. And here is something that I recommend. 
You actually don't need to do this, but it's something to show the examiners that you are actually good in what you do here. You ask a second question for the same topic here, Wohnort. You kind of react to the answer of your partner. Aha, wohnen Sie dort allein? So you ask him or her, do you live alone in Sendling? And he or she will respond, nein, ich wohne in einer WG. So that's the first card. You are done with this. Second card. I would choose Familie because that's also pretty easy. Haben Sie Geschwister? And his answer or her answer, ja. Ich habe einen Bruder. And again, you want to show that you are good in what you do? Ask a second question. Aha. Und wohnt er auch in München? So you want to know if he also lives in Munich. Pretty easy. It's not hard to ask this. And it will definitely earn you some extra points. He or she will answer, nein. Er wohnt in Stuttgart. My second card, Familie, is finished. As my third topic, I choose Studium. And I just assume the partner that I ask is my age. So I ask like this here. Darf ich fragen, was Sie studiert haben? I think you realize that I used a very polite way to ask him or her. I do this intentionally because like this, I can show these examiners that I learned exactly this grammar in my A2 course. And you should have learned this. It's part of A2. Indirect questions. If you are the one who answers this question, you also want to show that you are quite good in having a conversation. So you don't just answer in one sentence. For example, Ich studiere momentan Medizin. Ich bin jetzt im vierten Semester. This will also earn you some extra points. But your partner or you, you are not done yet with the third topic. You want to get some more out of this, so you ask. Wow, Medizin, das ist sehr schwierig, oder? Ja. Ich muss sehr viel lernen. So you can see what I'm trying to teach here, right? It's not just about somehow passing this test. I hope that you get good, a good result, a lot of points. So all those second questions, which are not necessary, they will just help you to get a better result. Let's move on to the fourth and last topic, which is Sport. Machen Sie gerne Sport? Super easy question. And the answer? Ja, ich spiele sehr gern Fußball. Ich trainiere dreimal pro Woche. And here again, the one who is answering the questions is trying to show off. Uh, I mean, trying to get some more points. If you also want some more points, ask your second question. Just react to his answer or her answer. Und wie lange trainieren Sie? Das Training dauert zwei Stunden. That's it. Your part in asking for questions is done. But now it all changes. Your partner will ask his questions or her questions. And you will need to answer those questions. We will not do all this again. You already know how it works. We start with the second part. Sprechen Teil Zwei. Here you will have to say something about yourself. It's a monologue. You will also get two papers, two cards, but they look a bit different. Also, the one that you get and the one that your partner gets, they are not the same. They are different as well. In the middle of this card, let's say this card is yours. There is a question. Was machen Sie? Mit ihren Freunden. And around this question, there are four 
Keywords. Sport, Essen, Club, Party, Ausflüge. And now you have to talk about these four keywords and answer this question here. I would start with Sport because that's quite easy to talk about. And you can, for example, say this here. Ich habe einen Freund, mit dem ich einmal pro Woche ins Fitnessstudio gehe. And you know, if you want to have more points, say a bit more, second sentence. Wir trainieren circa zwei Stunden. Sport, dann. The next word, the next keyword I would choose is Essen, because that's also quite easy. Am Wochenende koche ich auch oft mit Freunden. Add something to get more points. Am liebsten vegetarische Gerichte. Not really difficult. The third keyword, Ausflüge. Manchmal machen wir auch Ausflüge zusammen. Wir fahren zum Beispiel in die Berge hier in der Nähe. There's one more keyword. It's actually two keywords. I just use one of them. Natürlich feiern wir auch gerne Partys. Meistens bei Freunden zu Hause. Wir hören Musik, tanzen, und trinken Bier. For the monologue, that's all you have to do. You're done. But the examiners will ask you one or two questions. They will refer to what you just said. They will just use something. They, they pick up something that you have said. For example, gehen Sie am Wochenende auch gerne in Clubs? Because you just said that you like to do party with your friends at home. Yeah, but you don't like clubs. Nein, in clubs gehe ich nicht so gern. Ich finde, das ist zu teuer. Und die Musik ist zu laut. The second question. Und wie kommen Sie in die Berge? So how do you get to the mountains, into the mountains, how you get there. Meine Eltern haben ein Auto. Wenn sie es nicht brauchen, darf ich es benutzen. You answered their questions. You told them a lot about yourself. The second part is done. Now your partner needs to do, needs to do the same like you just did. Then the third part starts. Etwas zusammen planen. In the third and last part of this test, you will have to plan something together with your partner. And this means it's a dialogue. The both of you, you and your partner, you will get a paper. Just like before, those papers look different. Here's an example what they might look like. The only thing which is exactly the same is your task. Sie möchten am Samstag einen Ausflug zusammen machen. Diskutieren Sie, was Sie genau machen wollen. So, on Saturday, you want to go on a short trip together. Please discuss what you want to do exactly. Now, there are those two diagrams. And here you can see they are not the same. In the middle there is Ausflug, which is the same. And all the keywords around Ausflug They are different on those papers, on both papers. On the left hand, there is in the Berge. On the right hand, an einen See. So, let's say you are partner A. Then this is your paper. The examiners give you 20 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds, to read the task and take a look at this diagram. And then they just pick one of you to start, you or your partner. And then you have to start. Though this means you don't have time to write something down. Just like in all the other parts of this test, you just need to start right away. So let's say you just begin. 
Ah, oh, before I start, for this part of the test, because it's a real role play, I chose to use do because it makes this kind of more real. You don't go on a trip with someone you don't really know. Of course, you can also use see, but just for my example, I used do. Hallo Tim, hast du am Samstag Zeit? Ich würde gerne einen Ausflug machen. So that's a quite easy start for this conversation. And then Tim answers. Ja, am Samstag habe ich Zeit. Was möchtest du machen? It's also a simple way to reply, to respond to this question here. Then the next step. Wir könnten in die Berge fahren und ein paar Stunden wandern. So here I already included in die Berge fahren and wandern. Tim replies, in die Berge, wandern, hm, ich würde lieber an einen See fahren. He answers like this because on his paper, there is not in die Berge, there is an einen See. And in the next step, hm, ja, das ist auch eine gute Idee. Und was machen wir dort? So I just respond to his last sentence and pass the ball back to him. I want to know what he wants to do there. Tim is smart and he's good in answering. Wir können ein bisschen spazieren gehen und im See schwimmen. Schwimmen was on his paper. But spazieren gehen he added because he wants to get some more points. Um, yeah, so you need to respond. Klingt gut. Aber wie kommen wir an den See? Mit dem Auto? On my paper or your paper, there was mit dem Auto. So I use it here. Just very simple. And klingt gut. This is actually, actually also a good way to tell someone that you agree with what he just said and you think it's a good idea. Klingt gut. Memorize this one. Nein, nein, der See ist hier in der Nähe. Ich schlage vor, dass wir mit dem Rad fahren. Was denkst du? Tim is also pretty clever because he used mit dem Rad in a sentence with das. This is also a grammar which is part of A2. So he used a grammar from of A2 and used something that was on his paper. Perfect. And he passed the ball back to you. Was denkst du? Now you have to respond. Das finde ich super. Und für den Weg nehmen wir Brötchen und Cola mit. Okay. You have Essen on your paper, on your diagram. Brötchen, Cola, that's food and drinks. Perfect. Super Idee. Und wollen wir am Abend noch in ein Restaurant gehen? Tim replied really good again, because on his paper there was Restaurant. Um, yeah, and you have to respond to this question. Perfect. So machen wir es. Dann bis Samstag. Alles klar, bis Samstag. That's it. This was the whole dialogue. So you see that you actually kind of need to know a two grammar and words. For this speaking part, the whole speaking part, it's not enough to count on your luck. You will not pass this part of the test if you don't know what you do. And therefore, if you just realized that you are not up for this task or yet, that you need some more practice, that you need to know more about A2 grammar and words. I recommend our additional materials on our website. There you can find courses, online video courses, which follow a book. We have so far A1 and A2, 
depending on when you watch this video, maybe we already have B1. Worksheets, listening practice, reading exercises, all in one place, everything prepared for you just to follow our lead. All right, so now the only thing that is left for me to do is to give you some tips and tricks to pass this test with ease. The first thing I want to talk about here is komplette Sätze. In A1, the examiners might have made some exceptions if you answered in really short phrases like ja, nein. It's not possible in A2. If you want to have a good result and pass this test, not with 16 points or something like this, answer in whole uh, sentences. For example, you have this question here. Wie findest du die Idee? Super! This will not give you any points. Make it like this. Super! Super! Die Idee gefällt mir. Oder Die Idee ist wirklich toll. Klingt gut. So machen wir es. Like this, you kind of show that you are already past A1, that you belong in A2. So, answer in complete sentences. My second tip is about making mistakes. Fehler machen. It is totally normal and absolutely okay to make mistakes. You are in A2, so no one expects you to speak like a mother tongue. Not as fluent, not as grammatically correct. Just no one wants you to be that perfect. So when you are asked a question, answer. Even if you are not sure your answer is correct or incorrect, just speak. Just imagine you are the examiner and there is a participant who is asked a question and doesn't answer. Or does something like, um, um, ich weiß nicht, keine Ahnung. How are you gonna judge this? How many points would you give this participant? For me, it's clear, it's, it's just zero points, no points. But if you speak and make mistakes, which are you supposed to make? You will get points, maybe not a hundred points, but still you will get points. So speak, make your mistakes. Totally normal, totally okay. My third tip is about exactly what I just told you. These two words here. Keine Ahnung oder ich weiß nicht. It's not a good way to tell your partner or the examiners that you don't have a clue what he or she is talking about. You could say, wie bitte? This already is much better than keine Ahnung. Or if you want to be even a bit more high class in telling someone that you have no clue. Ich habe sie nicht richtig verstanden. Könnten Sie das bitte noch einmal sagen? Oh, das Wort kenne ich nicht. Was bedeutet das? All these sentences here. They will still earn you some points and you will get the chance to listen to what the person you are talking to just said once more. So memorize those sentences. I hope I could help you a bit in preparing this test. Take away your fear. It's not that bad. And I wish you good luck. All the best for your upcoming test. Let us know in the comments how your test went and if this video helped you. If you need help with other grammar topics or maybe even with some other test, check those links here. Mach's gut, bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss.